free play tech has upgraded the boards. We have two button positions that are new. We also have two new options for those. We can use silicone pads like the rest of these buttons, or we could use soft tack switches. This video is going to be a sample build uh, using both. I usually use a Dremel tool a lot. I'm going to try to avoid that and not use it at all in this build, and instead use files. I'm also going to use a screwdriver, sharpie, pliers, drill bits, my cutters, tweezers, a craft knife, sandpaper, and tape. Let's get to it. Now I'm going to mark up all the places I know I don't need. So to make fitting easier, I'm going to remove the speaker for now. And then start working on uh, the ports. I'm going to use a file for this, and I'm just going to file away a little at a time. Something that usually needs a little extra work to is the volume wheel. It usually rubs along the bottom and along this side here. Just a little bit of quick filing fixes that up. Just about done with the inside of the back here. If all of the screw points are sitting flat, port look to be pretty good and the volume wheel spins freely I had to do a little extra work on this case compared to the other ones that I've worked on here I needed to thin this plastic up a bit so the board will be able, could move down all the way and I had to remove part of the screw post here just file it down a little bit little things like that you have to sort of take it on a case by case <laughs> case by case basis so in the battery compartment, we don't have a whole lot to do. We get rid of this. Don't need that. We're gonna get rid of this raised section here. And this uh, kind of fin that's sticking out. I'm gonna make sure that those are smooth so we don't puncture the battery.
You know, I'm not really using this file the right way, but it has a nice sharp edge on it that is great for scraping. Onto the screen fitting. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. And there's one little spot here, this tiny little wall that um, is good to keep, I guess, but I have never really been able to keep it. I usually cut it off. And it's to hold this little piece of, this little metal tab on the shoulder. So it goes right in here. And the, and the shoulder kind of bumps up against it and it causes the shoulder to go back up. Well, after we put in uh, the board, the tack switch kind of holds, kind of holds the button up into that position anyway. You get a little extra, like if you can save that, you, it, it'll, it'll be a little bit nicer, but I've never been able to really save it. So what I do is I just bend this over out of the way so it doesn't uh, mess up the screen at all. If you can save that, that would be the way to do it, I guess. Actually, actually, it looks like I might be able to save it this time. Yay! Now for the ports in the front of the case. It's gonna be the same as the rear. We're just gonna step it down slowly, taking away a little bit, taking away a little bit, whatever is hitting and fitting and checking and doing it again until it's all the way down. And I know I want to get rid of the wall behind the USB here. See under the HDMI, there's a couple little parts of the wall that need to come out. I don't think the whole wall though. I think just these two little raised parts. See one thing here, underneath the, um, the speaker input, 
There's a little piece of solder that's bumping up against the plastic. So I don't, I don't want to get rid of this whole thing here. It's kind of a support, but I can get rid of some of it, like about half of it. All right, let's get the buttons in. I'm gonna use tape to mark where the pads are. Put a little divot here to keep the drill bit from wandering. I'm gonna start using drill bits that are really small. I'm gonna use uh, three in total, I think. Use the small one, medium sized one, and then I use that stepper bit. And as we go up in size, we can go ahead and move the hole a little bit uh, depending on where it needs to go. If it's hard to tell um, if the holes need to move a little bit, it's kind of hard to tell for me sometimes because it's like the, the parallax effect, whatever it is. I sometimes use a, like a toothpick. It can kind of help to figure out exactly where it is. The original holes are about nine and a half, so I'm gonna stop these at about seven. I'm gonna stop, the, stop them at like seven and check, and then um, go from there. Actually, now it's looking good. looking about perfect. It's good to take, to take it slow though. It's really easy to overshoot it and do too much and then you, you, know, you can't go back. So I'm gonna take this step bit and make a little extra room uh, from the rear. I'm gonna watch through here just to make sure I'm not hitting the edge. I don't really want to, I don't want to make this hole any wider or even touch it at all. I just want to clean up some of this around, around the opening in the back here for the button. ways these buttons can fit in. 
but uh, some are better than others, so you just turn it around to see where these little tabs are best. So I kind of like it when the B is crooked on top like this. It gets one tab kind of straddling this, uh, this wall here, and one just floating out here freely. And I'm just gonna clean out some of this room here. We have a little bit of extra, extra wall we can get rid of. Just some extra leftover parts from that drill bit. Now I'm gonna widen these holes up just a little bit. There's a couple ways to do it. I'm gonna try first to use this uh, stepper bit. I'm not gonna push down at all. I'm gonna keep it on number nine. I'm just gonna kinda of put a little bit of pressure around in the circle. Just very, very light pressure and try to keep it even so we have a nice circle. and I'm gonna be very careful not to touch the outside edge of this. I think it's kind of easier to go from the outside here so I can keep an eye on it and make sure I really don't touch it. This first variation is going to be with the uh, silicone pads. You're going to have two pads, two sets of pads that look like this. And they would normally sit on here like so. But I'm going to cut them up. I kind of cut these a little bit too small. So, you know, you can keep more material, the more the better, I would think. And um, it's going to be something like this. speakers in place it kind of is blocking the screen a bit so the screen's gonna have to be pushed over just off centered so if we can move it over a little bit we can keep that line of the screen um, a little bit more over this way in, in line with the outside of this uh, button wheel so I'm gonna get rid of this wall and uh, probably all the way up to here So here's an example of how these kind of cases can be different. In my testing, I use this case, and everything is fine. 
pretty tight. Of course, everything's tight in here, but it will work with the speaker. Um, everything kind of fits. When using this case, in the same way, this wall is just a little bit thicker than this wall. So now the speaker doesn't fit. We run into trouble with this, with this leg that's pointing down here. So to fix that, I turn this to straddle the screw post. I had to cut away a little bit extra to make these legs fit. And that's what I'm going with. So you have to sort of figure out different kind of solutions on the fly sometimes whenever these cases, they're not exactly all the same. So I just did a test build to kind of check the buttons and everything's perfect except the bottom was getting caught. This button would be getting caught when you press it down and it was pretty rough. So I came back with a file and kind of filed it as best I could to smooth out every little area. Little tiny things really make a big difference. So even at the top of these button wells, I had to smooth those out because that's where it was actually getting caught. The button would be pressed and the very bottom of the button would be rubbing up against something on these. So I smoothed those all out and everywhere else here just to be sure. So this looks like the final internal version for my, uh, this, my silicone pads here. And you can actually take a little more time and be more careful than me and save more of this post. I sort of started to rush a little bit too much and I wiped that up accidentally. The speaker area here, I got rid of all of this wall and a very small amount at the base of this post. That way the speaker can move over just a little bit more to make room for uh, the screen. So depending on your case, it, you just have to look at that and see if you have to do those things or not and uh, you know make that call when you get there. So let's build this for the silicone pads. I'm not going to fix the screen in permanently yet because I'm going to do the other buttons right after this. And this is how I have mine set up. When I put these screws in, I like to hold the pressure down completely with my thumb so that way the threads and, and the plastic, they don't get kind of worn. They don't have to do all of that work. Let my thumb do the work and all the screw has to do and the threads have to do is just hold it in place. this little piece of power switch. All right, let's test the buttons with the silicone pads. I haven't cleaned everything up yet, of course. I'm gonna wait until I do the tack switches in a minute. Then I will f uh, finish up the screen and get the screen protector off there, all that kind of stuff. Clean up the buttons. The buttons feel great. They feel exactly like these two, which is what we want. All right, so now to do the tack switches. So with these tack switches, we're gonna use the same board and each pad has through holes. So we're just gonna fix the, uh, 
button to it and solder it on. After I soldered these on, I noticed there was a bit of a gap between the post and the board. So it's really um, important to make these as flat as you can on the back of the board with your soldering. I went back and just, I just clipped them down. And I'm also going to file a little bit of a groove on each side of these, these posts here. or clip. Perfect. Just a couple things left to do. The black plastic part of the tech switch is coming into contact with the button well so we can't close the case all the way. So let's cut that down. That looks pretty good. Shortened the A and B button wells. Next thing we have to do is shorten the buttons. We need to make them shorter, down to about these little legs. And I'm going to also sand away the letters. I just grabbed some sandpaper that I have lying around. I started with 120, then a 240 grit, 600, and then 1200. Nothing special about those numbers, I just had these lying around. Now to shorten them up. That's about it. I had to go back and um, bring these A and B button wells down just a little bit more because the tack switches were bumping up against them. So let's put this thing together. The speaker, I didn't remove any of the adhesive backings because I don't want to stick it in there permanently just yet. I want to uh, leave it open 
for me to do some upgrades later on. And also the, um, the heat sink. I'm not gonna put this on right now either, but you would just remove the adhesive and stick it on like so. Vertical orientation. That's about it. I'm really liking these new button upgrades, both uh, the silicone pad option and the t soft tack switch. Um, if I had to choose one, I think my favorite is the uh, soft tack switch. It's a little more firm, but it's still like a nice, nice button press. Yeah, they feel really great. So, thank you for watching. If you're working on the build, I hope it turns out great.